Assalamu alaikum once again, good afternoon. So um, I'm going to talk about um, the IIUM, International Islamic University in Malaysia, and the experience there, and I think the triple IT role as well as legacy, uh, which also, of course, is uh, Dr. Jamal's legacy as well in, at that university. So um, I had experiences there both as a student, later on as an instructor, so I could see sort of both sides of, of the classroom. I did not have administrative experience for that. You will have to talk to Brother Obey Talib because he, he had quite significant administrative experience at IAUM. So how was the education at IAUM structured and how did it reflect Triple IT's view on how that education would be reformed within Muslim societies. First of all, it was a two-track education that was meant to be integrated into one. So that Islamic knowledge and human knowledge, Islamic knowledge meaning revealed knowledge that comes from the Quran and the Sunnah, and then human knowledge as especially manifested in human and social sciences, and to some extent in natural sciences, would be integrated under one umbrella, under one roof so that students would study both at the same time. So this bifurcation that we have, you know, you have theological schools and seminaries where you study theology and revealed knowledge on the one hand, and that's what you confine yourself to. And then if you study social sciences and human sciences, then that's all you study. You, you learn nothing about religion or theology, and they're kept separate is actually meant to be reintegrated and that's that was really the goal and uh, of the IIUM and especially when Triple IT came and then when Dr. Jamal became the Dean of the Kulia or the Faculty of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences this was really put into practice um, so that integration of knowledge so for instance how did it work if you were to major in Islamic studies like I did you had to take a minor in one of the social sciences. In my case, I took political science. So I had to study both. If you were majoring in social sciences, uh, and that could be sociology, it could be economics, it could be political science. I did psychology. Psychology. Um, you had to minor in Islamic studies. Not only did you have to minor, but you also had to learn Arabic to a certain degree. And Arabic, uh, learning and teaching of Arabic language was integrated into curriculum. And the idea was that even those students who studied social sciences, which they did in English language, would reach level of proficiency in Arabic that they would be able to take, I believe it was two courses in Arabic language. Uh, meaning two courses in Islamic studies taught in Arabic language. Whereas those of us who were in, in Islamic studies, we studied in Arabic language but a minor was taught in English. So that it also meant at least being bilingual, right? So, so that was, that integration of knowledge and that idea, I think was quite revolutionary and still continues to be because I don't think there are that many universities in the world that, that operate under these assumptions today. You either study theology, ilahiyat, seminary, and what have you, or you study your secular sciences and never the twain shall meet, right? So in this case, that uh, they did meet. And, um, but this was also reflected, I think, in social life, not only in academic life, but in social life. So that also, there was an aspect of training and spirituality as well. And, um, and so we had to take, I think it was what, Saturday's morning, and then later on Friday's mornings, we had to go for Usra, and nobody liked it, right? <laughs> we didn't like it back then. I but, liked um, it a lot. I was the president of the program. Yeah, <laughs> okay, well, we'll talk about it. No, but actually it was, it, was very, it, was, it was a very good component because it meant, this was extracurricular activities that also were meant to supplement academic knowledge with also spiritual component and so on. And that was also what integration of knowledge meant and that was the, the not only an attempt but ac the actual reform of education in action. And um, and then that extended also I think to child care and kindergarten and also Islamic school that was operated by the university as well. 
And so I know that because my both daughters were born in Malaysia and they went to childcare and kindergarten at Islamic University. So it was really kind of like a place where you could go from birth all the way till you till your PhD. Well, also uh, gave parenting uh, classes. And too. parenting classes too were also required. Later on they were part of, of curriculum. You had to as extracurricular you had to take parenting classes as well. So there was there was a lot going on there, but it was all attempt to try and think outside the box. And I think that was really what was what was useful and innovative here because um, I think the people that led the university and that included obviously um, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman as the rector of the university and Dr. Jamal as the dean of the Kaliya of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences were um, really trying to put new things into practice and with every new things you had hit and misses right you had hits and misses some things worked and they worked wonderfully some things didn't work and they were rethought and I remember even uh, as a student I think it was in my second year that the whole Kuliya of RKH was the whole uh, academic program was reshuffled and reintroduced so that this idea of integration of knowledge would be fully operational so we had to take courses in Al-Wahi Masdar Al-Ma'rifa, you know, the revelation as a source of knowledge, and um, all of the many courses that were part of that program of reform of education. Unfortunately, for the reasons that I think are known to a lot of people here of the 1998 political climate in Malaysia changed, and that in some way led to the loss of that dynamism. That didn't mean that the project itself ended. The IIUM still exists today and still, in essence, follows this program of education and this approach to integration of knowledge. But without, I think, the original, you know, impetus that was given and dynamics that was provided by the people who were really leading the project, I think it's lost some of its uh, dynamism and efficiency. If I were to evaluate this, I think one of the bigger problems, and this is also part of reform education, which I think the university and IIIT both were trying to address was lack of qualified teachers and trainers. So, for instance, somebody needs to teach Islamic theories of international relations, right? Well, you can find a person who can teach political science side of stuff, and then you can find your sheikh who can teach you about the seer and all the... All, but how do you find somebody who can teach both in a really meaningful way? That's difficult. And so the university itself was trying to produce people who will eventually be able and capable of doing that. Part of the problem also was students' motivation. I think a lot of students, and I think this is universal across the world, simply lack motivation to deeply engage in these, in these philosophical and existential questions that this type of education really requires them to. And then uh, generally low level of intellectualism in education in Muslim societies because remember this was an international Islamic university I think at the time when I was there there were students from more than 80 countries maybe you can correct me how many about 100. about 100 different countries of the world both students and professors and so people come from a variety of educational backgrounds uh, they come from countries where educational level is really low and they come and struggle with almost basic literacy and some come with much better background and then you have to bring them all in the same classroom so it's also a pedagogical challenge and so on but it also had its advantages now to to bring it um, to an end I think I may have a couple minutes right yeah, please um, I think um, with that limited and short experience um, even if you go back to you know, when the triple IT came and Abdul Hamid, may Allah preserve his health, um, became the rector in 1988, I believe. So, so we're talking only about 10 years of really direct involvement. That's a very, very short time. That's a very, very short. And even with that, I think there were some remarkable results that were, that were achieved. Um, uh, several generations of students came out of that university that are now very successful in many countries of the world. I can tell you from my own example, my own country in Bosnia and Herzegovina, where, where I'm from, uh, the, the alumni, we have almost 200 students who have graduated from that university. It's very active and, uh, um, and oftentimes they are called Malaysian Mafia in Bosnia because they are seen as very strongly knit together and uh, also very contributing 
in, in, in civil society, in politics, in education. Some of them are professors at universities. Some of them are leaders in, in political parties. Some of them are leaders in civil society. Bankers. Uh, bankers, and so on and so forth. Uh, one of them started first Islamic Bank in Bosnia, so helped to start and so on. So I think th these are the examples where a real reform of society could be achieved through a carefully crafted program uh, and uh, reform of education. I think sometimes we are overly critical without seeing really the impact that these kind of institutions can make. Of, um, and to, uh, to conclude, uh, Dr. Amara talked about women. Today, currently, rector of the university is a woman, and the dean of the Kalia of our cage, with you know, Dr. Jamal, I am who used to be, is a woman too. So these are quite remarkable also. So at the level of leadership as well, there's been a reform, and, and, and nobody really questions why is woman leading the university, or why is woman in this leadership position. So I think the kind of IOM, with all its weaknesses and failings, which are many, and of course many have pointed them out, has also achieved tremendous, tremendous achievements and, and successes that need to be studied and perhaps even that experience needs to be in some ways emulated in, in, in many other. And as uh, Dr. Abu Bakr said, is, uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid is still very much in touch with the university and continues to help develop new programs as we learn more about this whole idea of integration of knowledge, uh, he's constantly going back and working with the university to try to make it better, to make it stronger. So the reform of education is continuing. Triple IT is still very much involved in that project. And, uh, and uh, obviously, this is just one example, one small case study of a wider project that we've been talking about. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.